Hi there, and welcome to my Huga Grow. Uh, my name is Christina. I use she, her pronouns, and I uh, live in Sacramento, California with my husband, Joel, and my um, very large uh, cat, Nissa, which I'm sure you'll see her at some point in the future, uh, but she is not allowed in the nursery right now. We're trying to keep it nice and clean, and that is where I am filming from. Um, it definitely gets the best light in our house, so I plan to use it until it is otherwise occupied. Um, I, If you haven't seen my previous video, I did a full review of all of my uh, knits from 2022. It was a really long video. <laughs> it was a lot of content. So I uh, have, I didn't share much about myself. Um, so I, right now I am on maternity leave. I am uh, nine months or 40 weeks pregnant uh, plus two days. <laughs> so we're um, definitely playing against the clock here trying to start a knitting podcast. Um, so I said in the last episode, we'll see what happens, uh, and that is what we will do. Um, but when I am not on maternity leave, I am uh, I work in the public health field, and I uh, work specifically in HIV prevention. So that's what my days are usually filled with, and then my evenings are filled with knitting. <laughs> mostly. Um, but yeah, so t today I'm hoping to um, film kind of just a smaller chunk of what I am working on now. Um, and uh, I have a few things to share with you. Just a little snapshot of January uh, knits. Um, I'm assuming that once um, this baby decides to come out, I, I will have a lot less time to knit. So I don't anticipate uh, getting a ton of progress on what I'm sharing with you today, but I did want to record this before I have a baby. So I wanted to start with my first um, finished object of the new year. Uh, today is January 8th. Uh, so hasn't been all that long. I cast this on after Christmas and I, it's just been such a fun project and I've been working on it um, quite a bit. It's something that I, I did want to get done before the baby came. So it's a, a lovey, uh, which if you're not <laughs> familiar with baby accessories, um, it's like a small comfort blanket that's usually attached to a stuffed animal, usually just the head, maybe the arms of a stuffed animal. So it's like a stuffed animal blanket hybrid. Um, and from, as far as I can tell, babies love them. <laughs> so that is, uh, what, oh, almost fell, what I knit. Uh, this was definitely... Um, inspired by um, Carson uh, of uh, Carsley Handmade, I think is the name of her Instagram and her podcast. Not sure if I'm pronouncing that uh, correctly, but yeah, Carson um, is a, a knitting podcaster that um, I, I love her videos. Uh, she just you know, chats and <laughs> talks at length about all of her projects. And it's great because you could just knit and listen and, and giggle when um, when she's laughing at herself. But Carson knit uh, a similar thing. She just had her baby uh, f a few weeks ago, I believe. And, um, that was the last thing that she like posted. She's gone dark <laughs> on Instagram and YouTube. Um, but she made a little lovey with a deer head. Uh, and the, 
she kind of went over the instructions or like what she did. And there was a uh, stuffed animal pattern designer uh, that she found the, it was a, a full deer pattern. Uh, and she used the head of that pattern as the deer head on her lovey and then used a different free pattern on Ravelry to knit the, uh, like the blanket, the lovey part. And so, and the lovey part is kind of just like, I don't know if you can see it better like that, but it's almost just like a washcloth pattern. Um, but yeah, so she, uh, she had posted all of that information on Instagram and I saw the lovey and I was like, Oh my gosh, she's like, I have to do that immediately. Um, and I had some leftover yarn from uh, like a little hospital coming home set that I made last year. I shared it in my last video. And I was like, ooh, I can use that, that scrap yarn from that project to make this and then it'll be like a really fully matching set. Uh, so that yarn was Barocco Vintage Baby. And I didn't in my last video share what the um, colors were that I used. And so those were Toast and Pearl. And I also said in my last video that there was cotton in this yarn. There's not cotton in the yarn. It is an acrylic wool and nylon mix. So it is washable. It's, you know, it's designed for babies, uh, but it is not, there's no cotton in it. I said cotton because it really, to me, it feels like there's cotton in it. Uh, so maybe that's why I thought that. But the... Um, pattern that I used I looked through that stuffed animal pattern designers website and the deer was so cute uh, but then I saw the little barn owl so this guy is the little barn owl by um, on Instagram the the handle is at mini Kaikla and on Etsy the pattern designer is cute knit toy. So I don't know if Kaikla is that <laughs> another language, but um, that is the designer. They're not on Ravelry, um, but you, yeah, all their patterns are available on Etsy. And I know Carson was raving about the pattern that she used. And um, I also really loved this pattern. And then the lovey part is um, the Moose Lovey by Thora Bay. And that is, that one is on Ravelry. And that pattern has a moose head on it, um, which is really cute uh, and would make a really cute lovey. And then you only have to use one pattern that's free. Um, but I fell in love with the little barn owl when I was on that designer's Etsy. Um, <laughs> it's just so cute. Oh my gosh. Um, I, I will say that I'm not sure that doing a full owl was, you know, a good idea. <laughs> Looking back at what Carson did using just the head of a deer stuffed animal, um, that would have been a lot faster uh, to do. <laughs> um, probably only required like one cast on and cast off, maybe a couple other little pieces. Um, whereas making the full owl <laughs> did involve knitting this white body part and then the like head that goes down into the tail and then the wings on both sides which end in a little white tip. Um, so <laughs> you had to change yarn at that point. And then you also have to knit um, the little feet, which are uh, knit in two, it's like a combination of two I cords. So for each one. <laughs> so, and then of course the, sa the safety eyes, which 
for something I actually had in my stash um, from when I was a child. Uh, when I started knitting, all I wanted to do was knit stuffed animals. And so I had like, I still have safety eyes <laughs> left over from that. Um, I was not very good at knitting stuffed animals. So <laughs> I, I will not be showing anything <laughs> from my childhood knits. Uh, this is much, much better. Uh, yeah, so I absolutely love it. I do think I just attached the, this just finished blocking and I attached the bottom today. I think I'm going to go in and with like a needle and thread rather than with yarn and just attach it more securely to the bottom. I think it'll give it a better overall look um, as well as just being more secure because you know it could get yanked on. I was thinking it would be much more convenient to like sew a button somewhere on the bottom or maybe two buttons and then sew uh, um, knit buttonholes into the lovey part maybe even just the like cast on in the middle so that it would be removable or maybe to do it with snaps uh, just so the blanket part could be removed for washing and and the toy part could be washed less <laughs> because I mean I'm sure they'll both get dirty but um it's gonna be a lot harder to wash the top than it will be to wash the bottom uh but I didn't think ahead so you know if you decide to do this learn from my mistake um try your best to make it detachable okay so that was a lot. Oh, the last thing I didn't mention was that I, on the white part, I held uh, drops kid silk in white or accrue or something uh, with the white yarn, just to give it a little fluff, like how owls, their under feathers are, are cute and fluffy. So that is what I did. And I'll put our little and there, right next to my pregnancy tea. So that is the only thing I finished so far in January. I mean, I think it's pretty good. I have, it's only January 8th. <laughs> so one finished object, I'm happy with that. Um, it might be my last <laughs> for a while. So uh, yeah, the next thing I'm gonna talk about are a few whips. This first one is my longest standing whip. I believe I cast it on in August. Um, a couple things happened. First of all, I didn't have enough yarn, uh, so I frogged it and tried to knit it again smaller, and I didn't have enough yarn again. <laughs> and so I decided that I was not going to make it even smaller, but I was just going to buy more balls of yarn so then I had to wait for the yarn to come and then um, I started it and I thought that this would be a really great project to keep at my parents house because we're often there and it's nice to not have to like remember to bring my knitting or if I forget my knitting just like be kicking myself the whole time like I could have been knitting <laughs> or like chatting after dinner uh, but I left it there and then we ended up like not going over all that much in the fall and the winter so I haven't gotten all that far on it but it is a baby blanket and it is the four corners blanket bulky by um uh it's a pearl soho free pattern so it's gonna be pretty much impossible to show the whole thing uh, but essentially what you do is you knit a big triangle and then after you knit your triangle you go in on one of the edges and pick up stitches so you can see here i've picked up the stitches and you knit another triangle so you go from the 
biggest side to the smallest. And then once I finished this triangle, which should be pretty soon, then I'll pick up stitches along this edge and knit another triangle. <laughs> and then the last one, I would pick up stitches along the edge here and I would knit the triangle while attaching it to this first, first triangle. So I have knit this pattern before for uh, my cousin who had, um, well, she has three babies now, but <laughs> for her first baby a while ago. Uh, and um, she had mentioned to me uh, recently that it was, or like in the last few, in the last year at some point, that it was like something that they still used uh, and had. And I was very impressed because I did knit that in 100% wool. <laughs> and I, do, I do think it's a little felted. But um, it just got me thinking like, well, if that's something like they still use, should I knit one? And then it'll be a really long term item for our child and maybe eventually children. So I decided to knit it and I went a little bigger this time. Uh, the yarn is Cascade uh, Pacific Bulky and the colors are, this one is gold, this one is ruby, yeah, ruby. And then the other two corners will be uh, white, I think is what this one is called. Yep, white. And here we have navy. So the yarn was um, a little pricey. I was really hoping to just use four balls for this project. And not eight, but that is what happened. Um, and the mix is it 60% acrylic and 40% uh, superwash merino. Um, it does, it feel, it's a little shiny. All oh, acrylic yarn is going to be a little shinier than wool. But it is, it, ha it feels like merino. So that's really nice. I like an acrylic yarn that does have some wool content. But unlike the one I knit for my cousin years ago, this one will be washable. <laughs> so I feel a little bad about, about my past behavior, but um, yeah, so that's this whip. Um, I'm, I'm like waffling between it being um, like something I just want to have done so that you can, we can have it. As you can tell, I probably are, Nursery is nautical themed, which is why I chose these colors. Uh, but um, yeah, I, I'm like, do I want to just have it done or do I want to save this? Because it's super easy knitting for when I have fried new mom brain. Um, and I'm leaning towards the latter one, but it's just so nice to pick up. Um, I never have to look at the pattern because it's just in my brain. Um, but yeah. So my next whip that I am going to show is a, well, it's the beginnings of a scarf, or it might be called a wrap, I think. Um, of course, I'm in the middle of a row, so it's really difficult <laughs> to show I got yarn all over the place. Um, but it is the Seelig wrap. Uh, the designer is Katrin Schubert, uh, but it was published in the 30th issue of Pom Pom, and it was the it was the pattern on the cover featured on the cover. So I don't know. I'm like late to the game, but I thought it was so cool. It's knit in garter and brioche with two colors. Um, so you can see all the, these like wavy bits. Those are the brioche stitches. And then everything else is in, in garter in alternating colors. The yarn that I'm using, um, the, let's see if I have a full skein that I can pull again. Yeah, 
here we go. Well, it's a little sloppy. <laughs> but the yarn is Malabrigo Caprino in Sandbank. And my husband and I are arguing about whether this yarn is uh, like beige or pink. Uh, so weigh in in the comments, join our marital <laughs> tiff about who can see what colors, which comes up a lot. Um, but I, I just recently started using Malabrigo yarns. Um, I know I'm late, but Oh my gosh, are they soft? So this one is made of 80% merino and 20% cashmere. So it's like, it's so nice. <laughs> and then to, to kind of cut the costs on this shawl, because I could not do the whole thing in that yarn, um, I'm pairing it with Cascade 220 Sport in natural. And this one is 100% wool. And I think it's 100% Highland wool. So those are the yarns. Um, <clears throat> I'm loving the construction of it. It was challenging to figure out the selvage edge, um, but I got it <laughs> eventually. Uh, and I posted, I put some notes in Ravelry if you want a little cheat sheet on the salvage edge. It's not well described in the pattern. I will say that. Um, but it's so soft. Uh, I've barely started. I'm like, I didn't realize how long <laughs> scarves and shawls took or how much yarn they took either. Uh, so that's been a rude awakening. Of course, I was knitting it in church this morning and I had my my row counter it was wrong and so I messed up a row and now I have to like completely take it back but um but it's a pretty I mean it's simple patterning to follow once you get the rhythm down um yeah I really like it and I'm excited to have it I feel like it'll be a good breastfeeding cover wrap thing um if I even finish it before I stop breastfeeding, because this one's, this one's taken me a while. Uh, next whip is the Advent Mystery Mittens 2022. I should show my, my little project bag here. It's actually a Dolce & Gabbana makeup case that my friend asked me if I wanted because they didn't want it anymore. And I love it for... Uh, this project because this project is a color work project and so I'll take I'll take the color work out but it's nice because I can like have all of my little balls in here and they don't get disturbed and I can just knit from them um, so the the project is the advent mystery Mittens, uh, 2022 by Nina Pomerensky of uh, A Crafter's Tale podcast. And they're not long enough. <laughs> Come on, little yarns, follow me. Okay, so this is like half done, I think. Um, the and they're they're like have this cute little pattern on the back and the, obviously these uh, poinsettias on the front and then up above this is going to be a little house <laughs> it's so cute and then on this side it says um on one mitten it says good yule which is merry christmas in lots of the Scandinavian languages actually I think uh, and um, the other one has a snowflake design on the top so really really cute I was like keeping up with the knit along or like the advent mystery part and then I needed to do the <clears throat> the cast on for the thumb gusset 
and it was a cable cast on. And I've just never done a cable cast on before. And I was so confused about how to do it <laughs> and like how it would work specifically with um, the thumb, uh, hold, putting the thumb stitches on hold and then like recasting it on. I didn't know if I was supposed to break the color work yarn. If you have the same problem, the answer is you turn the work <laughs> and knit from the wrong side. You cast on from the wrong side and you do cut your, <laughs> your color work yarn and then rejoin it uh, after you finish the cable cast on. So um, yeah, I learned that the hard way and it really stalled me out on this project. And then it was just like, I was working on other things, but I do really, really like them. And I did look at the full pattern to see what the rest of it was. Um, and I love it. It's got a cute little cabin. So I will um, finish those right now. I have them on my Chaigu shorties and I have two sets going of two going at the same time um, just to avoid the second second mitt syndrome um it'll probably hit me anyways well i guess it's already hit me it's, i'm in mid mid mitt syndrome um but yeah oh the yarns for that were um cloudborn fiber superwash sock twist in navy scarlet and ecru and um i mentioned this in my last episode i knit with a lot of discontinued yarns for various reasons and those are discontinued yarns that I bought on a closeout sale. Okay. Last work in progress is um, a sweater number 11 by My Favorite Things Knitwear. And I cast this sweater on uh, to join in on the um bougie sweatshirt cow uh by casey apple or being hosted by casey apple of of young folk knits podcast um so i'm so excited uh about this i have like most of the yoke done according to the pattern I'm, I was like ready to join for the sleeves a while ago. <laughs> it was going to be really, really tight in my pits. And um, I, have, I don't sweat very much when I'm pregnant, but when I'm not pregnant, I do. And so I was like, I'm going to need a little more room here. So I actually ripped back the you kind of like increase some here before you join. I ripped that back and I added 10 rows and then re-knit the little increase. And I am going to do the same thing on the back side to give it just an extra 10 rows. I did see on um, Ravelry that other people have that same issue of it being a little tight in the armpits. Um, I'm knitting it in drops air and the color is wheat it's like a mix it's called there's like drops air solid and drops air mix and so it's got this like slight irrigation in it um if you're not familiar with drops air it's a blown yarn so there's like a nylon tube of netting that they have and then they've blown in alpaca and a little bit of wool fiber and it makes just like such a fluffy beautiful fabric um squishy and i think it's going to be pretty drapey as well um which makes sense because it'd be alpaca but I, <laughs> I don't know why the yarn is literally called Drops Air. Um, I started in and I was like, oh my gosh, it's so 
light. <laughs> it's going to be the lightest sweater I own. Uh, so I'm excited about that because sweater number 11 is a, a chonky boy. And having yarn be extremely light will make up for how thick and chonky it is. So I'm very excited to be joining the bougie sweatshirt knit along. Um, this will be my first sweater base knit along. And actually the, the mittens were my first knit along and we can see how well that went. So, uh, but I, I do really want to finish it. It's been something that has been in my queue for a while that I um, just, you know, the, the knit along gave me the inspiration to cast it on and like really get going. Um, so those are all of my works in progress. Four is kind of unusual for me. I usually have six. So I might be casting on some more things soon. Uh, but I I do also have acquisitions that I wanted to show. These were like Chris, fun Christmas acquisitions. Most of them were gifts. And one was a gift to myself. Um, the first thing was something, well, it was supposed to be in my stocking, but my mom forgot um, and just gave it to me later. But it's piece of equipment. <laughs> it is a, a knitting, well, it, it's called a reading light, but obviously I will be using it for knitting. Um, so <laughs> essentially it's just light that you wear around your neck, which is great because um, there's some TV shows that, oh, and it gets brighter if you click it. Um, there's some TV shows where uh, Joel refuses to let me leave the lights on <laughs> so that I can knit during that show. Uh, so this will be perfect. And actually I can, I can knit during other shows and he can have the light off. <laughs> um, the most recent one was Andor. He was like, absolutely, you can't have the light on during Andor. And I was like, all right, fine. I'll just watch it. <laughs> but now... I will be able to knit as well. Um, and then the next one is something that was a little splurgy splurge for myself. It was like a pre-Christmas <laughs> gift to me, which feels a little icky, but it is a... Uh, shop or a knitting Nelly um project bag and this was a like specific Christmas release I love the colors it's so it was a Christmas specific bag but I feel like the colors make it really really like I would use this not in Christmas <laughs> and be like not even notice um, my favorite part is the flannel on the back. I don't know why I love it so much, but just, just like really soft. And this um, drop, so I, if you're not familiar with knitting Nelly, um, you should definitely check her out on Instagram at shop knitting Nelly. Uh, and it did, it came with, or like it was bundled with a sock set from little lion head knits. Uh, so the wool here, it matches exactly <laughs> to the colors of the bag, which I think is so cool. But the, I guess, color way of this set is Frosty Forest. And it's an 85% Superwash Merino, 50% Donegal Nep. I don't know what Nep is. Um, I believe it has to do with like the, the tweediness um, and it's fingering weight and the 100 gram ball has 438 yards in it so I think I'm going to cast on some socks soon with this I am planning to knit oh it's so soft I am planning to knit the um Toad, Magic Toadstool Socks by Stone Knits. I think the colors are perfect for it, and I feel like the uh, the amounts of yarn are perfect for it. 
Um, and I really wanted to use all three colors together. So I was like searching for patterns that were color work with three colors and not just two colors. Um, yeah, so Little Line Head Knits sock set. Um, amazing. I will put that here because it's so pretty. Um, next up, this was a gift from Joel for Christmas, and it is so extravagant. <laughs> um, I'm like, I can't even believe I'm holding it in my hands. <laughs> it's so extravagant. But it is a needle binder, a leather needle binder from Thread and Maple. Um, so these binders, if you're not familiar with them, they come or like you order them with custom inserts for whatever needle sets you have. Um, so I can show you, I have some pages. This one is the, um, Chai Gu, uh, shorties, the small pack. Um, so it has all of the correct little slots to put all of those needles. And then this one is the Chai Gu complete, but it, I'm using it with, I had just have like a set of clover interchangeables. Eventually I'd like to get uh, the Chai Gu set, which is why I got this binder sleeve um, <clears throat> and just use my clovers as a backup. Um, and then there's also a page for um, VPNs in here that I'm using. And then the back of the, like the actual binder itself also has DPNs. So if you look at their website, you will know that these are very, very pricey. <laughs> and um, I know he did get on Black Friday. They were doing a deal where if you spent a certain amount on um, on the binder, the leather binder and the pages, then you would get a like another page for free. And so I actually have that the other page uh, in one of my project bags right now. It is the project page. You can also take out any of the binder pages and fold them and use them and like carry them separately from the binder too. So I just think that's so cool. But I have this as like a little notions case in one of my project bags. I'm trying to um, keep notions more handy and have one uh, you know at least a few notions in every project bag just because I hear it is a good practice for when you are um trying to knit with a newborn <laughs> you can't always get up to get your <laughs> needle or your um you know what your stitch markers so it's better to keep a small notions bag with every project instead of like one notions container that has everything. Um, so I'm trying to, trying to put that into practice. Uh, and then the last acquisition I got, this was a gift from my brother. Um, he lives in Copenhagen and he <laughs> went to the knitting for olive store. Uh, which I'm so jealous of. I can't believe he got to go. So it was like a yarn showroom. <laughs> and like you, could, they had like one ball of every color and then you like ask them and they like go and grab it from the back <laughs> to get like the quantity that you need, which I think is like, of course, of course they would have that. Um, so he, um, I, I mean, I asked for these, but he went and he, got them um so it is the uh knitting for olive heavy merino and then some soft silk mohair the heavy merino i've arranged them in this box so that i can look at them like they're a box of chocolates <laughs> and they feel like a box of chocolates the um heavy merino it feels so nice. Um, it's in hazel, the color hazel. And it's just kind of like a nice gray, I would call it grayish 
like a grayish taupe color. Um, 100% merino. My plans for, I have seven balls and my plans are to knit the Knitting for Olive uh, baby bear suit. And then for the uh, soft silk mohair, I have one in dark mousse and five in cream. So uh, the the mohairs I have loose plans for. Um, I'm gonna use two of them in the Ovis socks by the Petite Knitter. I think those socks are so cute and I have the other yarn that's required for that project. So I will, I'm planning on knitting those and then I have some other plans for the white mohair, but my experience is you can never go wrong just having white um, white mohairs. I have used like white mohair scraps in so many different projects and um, they pair well with any light color. So just so excited to have these yarns in my stash. They're so pretty. And this is my first time knitting with Knitting for Olive. So that's everything I have for January, my January knitting. Uh, I don't anticipate being able to update on this knitting for a while. <laughs> we'll see if February happens, but probably not. So um, just wanted to have a record of it. Um, yeah, if you uh, joined and stayed to hear about all of my January knitting adventures, thank you. Um, if you want, you can like and subscribe. Um, I hear that's good. <laughs> and uh, hopefully I will see you again at some point in the future.